Welcome to the 100 Master Coaches series featuring Master Coaches from around the world. Let's journey together on this 100 Master Coaches series with your host, Coach Mel, MCC. Gabriel Sherban Kinale is a master certified coach and an entrepreneur, working with team and new leaders. He has had three decades of vast experience from sales to consultancy and facilitation, to executive coaching globally. He believes everyone can transform their career path and reach their destiny. Now on to the show. Hello, hello, and welcome to the 100 Master Coaches Show. This is Coach Mal, and today I have Gabriel Serban Kinole from Bucharest, Romania. Come on, give him a big welcome. Woohoo! Welcome to the show, Serban. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mel. Very good to see you again. And uh, yeah, looking yeah. forward for this time spent yeah. with you. Yeah. You know, um, we have quite a few things in common. We're both master coaches, obviously. And yeah. we are from the same school <laughs> in those days. We won't mention it here, but you know, we came from the same school. So it's just great to reconnect with you again. Yeah, same here. And uh, it's always a pleasure to... Yeah, not only to reconnect, but this is the the, the coaching village, you know. And every <laughs> now and then we we bump in uh, somebody who yeah. we know, you know, you, it's true. Mel, Giuseppe, I don't know, Mercy, <laughs> Karen, whoever. That's right. I mean, That's right. Yeah, it is. It is a global village. It is. It is. So I'm gonna jump in, Zerban. Um, how did your coaching journey begin for you? Tell us the story. Yeah, the story, <laughs> the story, it's amazing because yeah. uh, I, I keep telling this, uh, you know, to some, some people will yeah. call me or connect with me and, you know, they are curious about coaching and I was mm. not curious about coaching. I mean, this is the funny <laughs> thing. I, I think and I, I, I really, beyond any kind of belief, uh, I was not in need of any coaching or anything. I was not mm. aware. I was completely absent mm. of <laughs> such a profession or yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was pretty, let's say, confident at that time uh, in, uh, in, my, uh, in my life. Let's say I was yeah. a consultant and I thought that things are going pretty well for me. Mm. So somehow uh, in free time and internet was different those times. <laughs> I, uh, I just landed on, a, on an article. Oh. Uh, and guess what? I mean, it was written by actually he, he was uh, my mentor, my first mentor. But mm. I, I just read an article in which he was describing the, the feelings that that I had in that moment as a consultant who was quite successful working with banks, with big telcos, big, big corporations, mm. having this role of uh, providing info, you know, dumping content yeah. and all what, what, yeah. what the trainer does, you know, like giving you my knowledge. I'm an expert. I'm, yeah. I'm the big shot guy. Um, and here is Steve Meaton with his wonderful, wisdom you know connected to the collective intelligence mm. and he was mm. even from mm. the something was kind of stopping the, my entire universe was what is he <laughs> talking about i mean he was talking about humanity about yeah. uh, human contact i don't anyway and he was a uh, he was saying something about einstein and about how we perceive things that we cannot perceive at the level of the problems and that they are created and I yeah. was really puzzled. So that was a marketing program for coaches. This is how I started. You ask me, this is how I started. And uh, my background, it's a lot of commercial, a lot of sales. So for me, you know, to, to sell or even to sell myself was not really foreign, let's say. Mm. So, I didn't really get the point in that program. I was following the, it was an online program, by the way, in 2005. And uh, I was paying attention, but being a little bit distracted. And I had some one-to-one -one with him. And I said, Steve, 
by all means, this is very interesting. But I have, I don't have these problems. I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite successful. I can yeah. sell. Yeah. I mean, and I don't understand what coaching means because you are talking about marketing as a coach, and I don't even know what coaching is. Mm, mm. And I said, how can I find out? And he said, well, you know, why don't you, instead of me advising you, that was my first contact with a, with a master coach of this caliber. Mm. And uh, he said, you know, um, you shared with me, Sherban, that you are visiting your sister in uh, Florida. You know, why don't you check with uh, CTI at that time and do mm. fundamentals? And, you know, it's a, some hundreds of dollars. If you like it, fine. If you don't, you know, you just stay consultant, make your living, be successful. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> and this is how it started. So, mm -hmm. you know, I went there. Uh, I looked for a program I couldn't find in Florida. It was no program. <laughs> in Georgia, it was full booked. I see. I and see. finally, I, I found one in uh, San Rafael. And uh, I took the plane. I flew from Miami to San Rafael, wow. which was okay. about the same distance as from Bucharest to, uh, to Miami or more or less, you know. Wow. I didn't even realize, you know. So this is how I started. Mm. And yeah, and it was so powerful. I mean, the first two days of the program, I mean, I couldn't believe. I, I still remember those days mm. uh, because I called my wife. My wife was still in Miami with my little daughter. She was under one year old. And I said, look, I mean, this coaching, <laughs> my God, it's amazing. I mean, I, I know why I was wrong. I, I will get better. I will be this and that. And uh, my wife was a little bit astonished. And she said, Sherban, what, what are you doing? I mean, what, what did they tell you? What is that? I said, you'll see. I mean, wait <laughs> and, you know, I will explain you. And this is how it started. Mm. That was, that was, it's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Back in 2005, ICA mm. was not my, uh, my first school. I mean, this is interesting to, to mention because um, this is how I started. And uh, it was a yes for me. And then I was uh, forced to look for the rest of the modules in Europe or somewhere because I couldn't fly to, to California back, yeah. back for, I mean, I, I was pretty successful. I was making some money, but not so much money to afford to do the, the school in US. So yeah. I... I ended up in, uh, in Poland, mm. uh, uh, finishing, let's say the CTI, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the, the coactive uh, program. Yes. The, the, yeah. And, uh, uh, and this is how I started as a coach being a consultant. So I mm. would, I call this part of my, uh, my life as a coach, the consultant coach. I, I, you know, with, with today's standards and, uh, mm. you know, competences, uh, now I realize that I was not really doing uh, coaching per se. Coaching. I mean, I was mm. a, a lot of influencing from uh, my uh, my consulting practice, mm. uh, painting solutions yet instead of mm. listening and all that. That was the first, let's say, two three years. I uh, I was at this level, and actually, yeah. even my my uh, engagements, my contracts, and everything. Uh, arrived due to my consultant work and uh, you know because I was I had clients uh, nobody knew what coaching is at that time anyway yeah. so yeah. they were just budgeting and say hey you know instead of asking I don't know what trainer this is the budget can you do something you know yeah. what do you have well we have 20 supervisors promoted okay I will put them in a coaching program yeah. send you the proposal and this is how I started Mm. Okay, was it 100% coaching uh, by the book? Well, it was pretty much what I learned in the beginnings. Yeah. Uh, even the competences were a little bit uh, different versus yeah. now, I would say. Uh, anyway, different times. So this, mm. this was the beginning. Long answer. No, nah, it's good. It's good. I hear so many things, Urban, right? I hear... One, it was listening in to your mentor. Yeah. So taking in some, some wonderful advice wasn't really proven until you went there, got on it, got hooked on it, right? 
got on a phone with your wife and say, hey, this is the new world for me, right? And then still relied on your consulting. I like that, what I'm hearing, because there are a lot of coaches out there, they think that they have to, oh, I need to change myself altogether, you know, because coaching is so different from my previous life. So I love what I'm hearing, Shaban, because I kind of sense that it helps you to be a consultant. And then from there, stepping in and allowing your clients, your consulting clients, by the way, to experience coaching. So that's, that's a difference, I feel. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it, it was quite exotic uh, those times <laughs> like to, <laughs> to have a guy who calls himself a coach. A coach. And yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember I, uh, I got in this program with, uh, with a global company, beer company, Heineken. Mm. Mm. And uh, yeah, I was approached by, uh, by the HR there and the, um, and the guy who was leading the uh, development area. Mm. uh he he met me and he said okay well we we need you to deliver and we set up we developed some programs to yeah. for uh, for the management of the team and then uh, there is some kind of uh, coaching operational coaching for mm. our leaders but it's not what you're doing you know like the the hardcore coaching i mean it's mm. operational we do have some behaviors here in the corporation and we would like you to, to teach those people the ropes and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was interesting because I, I got invited. I was doing training, facilitating those things. Uh, but I was able to share my, let's say my, my stories, mm. um, as, a, as a, as a practitioner. Yeah. But as you say, in my mind, it was always a conflict. And I, <laughs> I remember at the very beginning, because once I, I uh, signed to become a consultant, I remember even uh, when I was in the business school in the 98, 2000, my dream was to become a consultant, a management mm. consultant. I mean, I was, you know, that was my dream. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, this dream becomes, I mean, turns into, okay, what a coach, consultant. I mean, it's not really the same. Mm. Uh, they are quite opposite, but they have some commonalities, let's say, yeah. In, yeah. The, in the, let's say, in the environment, in the container uh, context. Let's say you can, uh, you can assimilate the process. They yeah. are quite similar processes. Yeah. But anyway... So that, that was amazing at that time, but there were just the beginnings. And mm. the, the good part also was that I was always exposed to managers and team leaders and, you know, to companies because I, I never call myself a life coach or, you know, or I was not looking to work with private clients too much because yeah. I was always uh, paradoxically in the middle of the corporations that I was kind of running out of, yeah. you know, I mean, this is the paradox <laughs> because I, I was in corporations till yeah. uh, 2000 and then yeah. I established my own consultancy because yeah. I want to be independent. I mean, the, even my company name is independent consultant. <laughs> so what, you know, what do you want more? So, but this is the paradox. Now all yeah. my clients are coming from the corporations and yeah. You know, rarely I have uh, maybe a private client, but in general, mm. that was always, always my base and mm. my case studies and everything that I do mm. even now. Mm. And I mm. research and I uh, do design, I do based on the experience and the interactions that I have with yeah. managers and team leaders. Mm. And this is, I can call this my group. Yeah. I, I, you know, I like the, the word niche. I think it's more uh, a marketing term yeah. and it's sometimes it's, it's uh, creating confusion. Yeah. So I would, I would just say, Hey, those are my ideal clients. This is what I prefer to work with. And uh, I never say no to, to a private client, even mm. if they are not mm. managers mm. or uh, team leaders, but that will be my, my bingo. 
I mean, if mm. if you are from that world, <laughs> yeah, I can I can definitely be your coach, consultant, facilitator, Got it. whatever. Got it. And you know, this is very really helpful, especially for you know coaches coming in and, and trying to, as as we say, that the the niche, right, is to trying to find your sweet spot. Uh, and it seems like all the sweet spots have been taken by someone else. <laughs> um, so my question is, how does one actually, through your experience, right, find mm-hmm. that particular niche or, as you say, the group that you belong to and they belong to you as well? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, many years I followed uh, Steve's teachings, you know, from SOS yeah. Marketing, he even has a book about this, uh, written for coaches. Mm. So, you know, I mean, if nothing else, and if you are coming from uh, more from Anglo-Saxon world, which is, you know, in a sense, slightly different than the Eastern Europe or the place where I'm at, or me, yeah. you know, I, I'm not talking about Asia because I, with the exception of my previous students, I don't know very much how is to do business there, but I would imagine that is not mm. the same as in US or in Eastern Europe. So every area has their own. Yeah, true. I, I started by calling myself in different ways, you know, leadership coach and uh, maybe sales leaders coach or be- mm. pretty much based on or inspired by the projects that I was in in that Got moment. It. And I learned something from Steve that whoever comes to you and, you know, that Mm. famous KLT factor, they know you, they like you, they trust you. I mean, Mm. why would you go outside of this group? I mean, whoever knows you or you (laughs) just go there. I mean, as simple as that. Uh, But there is also this temptation. It depends Mm. how up you go on the ladder Mm. as far as your own experience. Because if you are part of a certain group and you understand how they operate and their culture, then you can speak their language. So I'm not surprised if somebody calls himself or herself executive coach, but they don't even have our experience, Mel. Mm. But they used to be C-level or something. So then, you know, if you're reaching the the pyramid and you're a C-level in a big corporation, yeah. And you have thousands of people and I don't know, all continents and all that. And you are very experienced in working with these dynamics. Mm. Well, by all means, you can coach somebody who has similar positions. I mean, yeah. this is a no brainer. Yeah. Now, if you go, if you want to reverse that and mm. uh, you are like me, I, I was, I was uh, having regional, I mean, I even had the GM position in a, a consulting training company a startup so my let's say my profile is more starting up projects and then after one or two years going to another project i'm not yeah. the typical c-level guy i mean i never i was never reaching that kind of positions i was more like project oriented and then mm. run to something else develop yeah. something else mm. uh, so you know for me it was kind of difficult to position myself in the executive world but guess what in Poland I met my second mentor the Mm. gentleman called Andrew Atter who I love him dearly a gentleman from UK and he was colleague with me in uh, in uh, the CTI program in Ah. 2007 and he Mm. said I just signed for the uh, Marshall Goldsmith uh, Central Europe uh, franchise or uh, network yeah. in uh, in Warsaw. So would you be interested? And, you know, Mel, I was like in my second years of <laughs> coaching, I was doing Heineken, I was working with some banks, but I was just, you know, I was not reaching the sea level. Yeah. And I I, uh, I got this offer. I, mm. I was a, a partner, senior partner in this uh, network for almost two years. Wow. And this is how I got in Vodafone Sea level uh, Vodafone had the turnaround. Uh, they bought the the Connex operator. Was it's a wonderful success. The first actually unicorn in Romania. It's uh, <laughs> called uh, Connex, and he was yeah. uh, bought by uh, Vodafone. 
mm-hmm. and that uh, that team was coached by Marshall Goldsmith at, at that time through Andrew Ather, and I was yeah. part of this uh, team. So I coached four of the nice. of the of the team at that time. This is how I started in executive coaching. So once mm. I got in that, it was, you know, obviously I can, and I can call myself because I yeah. had two years of experience of exposure. Yeah. And one thing uh, led to another. another. I went to Ericsson and to some other telcos and banks. And, and in that way, uh, I'm okay to call myself uh, an executive coach as well. Because it's also a matter of experience in the C-suite. No, it's not just I can call myself. Because yeah. you will not be able to enter. And mm. the third uh, episode was uh, how I got to ICA. And then I finished. I, uh, I had an accident in January 2008 oh. at ski. I was going in uh, Bulgaria. It was amazing. Oh. Two meters of snow. In the first day, tired, broke my leg. Long story short. Oh, wow. For three months, with all my contracts sold from uh, Q4 uh, 2007, in 2008, I was in bed. Mm. So I wrote to several uh, uh, big coaching names on the market. The only uh, school who answered me, because I needed like 20 hours to complete my education to, to mm. apply for my PCC. I was an ACC already. Mm. So the only uh, school who answered was ICA. Mm. And not only that, they even offered me a scholarship. It was a very nice fellow from New Zealand at that time. And yeah. Eastern Europe had at that time some kind of uh, scholarships. So I got a, a huge break. And he said, if you pay me in one week, we give you a huge discount. And I said, you know, I, I'm in bed. What can I do? So this is how I... <laughs> I started the ICA and that was a major, major breakthrough, I must say, because ICA is a complete program yes. yeah. and I was never getting in supervision or mentoring as, you know, it's these days. So I can say that I kind of, I was waking up as a <laughs> professional coach in 2009 based on the supervision that I had in uh, there. Mm-hmm. And then... 10 years, 2010, got my PCC, 2020, got my MCC. Yeah. So yeah. this is my, let's say, my last part of my uh, of my life in which I was kind of in denial. I mean, why do I need to become a master coach? I mean, I have projects. <laughs> I have, I will start education project. I'll do this and that. And I was very busy speaking, doing all kinds of things. Mm. This is the story. Mm. And here we are now. The pandemic arrived last year. Yeah. So I got I got my MCC in the first week of the pandemic. <laughs> so I was on, I said, okay, ICF, couldn't you send me this in December? Or because I was taking the exam, I don't know. In, yeah. I was yeah. already an MCC from December. You gave me in March when everybody is blocking. <laughs> inside and you know what do i do now with my mcc yeah that's that's what i say you know we have so many things in common i got my mcc during lockdown as well in march (laughs) can you believe that there you go imagine that yeah imagine that yeah Yeah. we're here we're here um we are here tell me it looks like you've got like 15 16 years under your belt as a coach right so Give us a couple of your insights through that one and a half decades of experience and exposure. Um, It has been great. I mean, I keep uh, saying that I'm so glad that coaching found me Mm. uh, because it's, it's kind of fitting my lifestyle. So I don't know. It's, Once in a while, I told you, I I get people here on my coaches and and they say, okay, I want to become a coach. And, you know, then taking my my coaching hat, I mean, why would you want to do that? I mean, why would, and so, well, I want to do, I want to make money. I want to be famous. Uh, Yeah. You will not be famous. You will not make money. (laughs) You will have a lot of pains. I mean, are you sure that you want to be, because what I'm saying is I got a lot of good things within this 15, 16 years. Yeah. 
many of them are because of suffering and discovering through emotional events. Mm. Uh, it's not what you believe, what you mm. want, and what you plan. Mm. Uh, talking about my mentors, I mean, I, I if if it's one thing that I will treasure and I will invite everybody to yeah. if if you don't have time or money to invest in a personal coach at least get some mentors every mm. one or two years pay mm. pay the mentor if not your personal coach because it mm. pays tenfold yeah. in my case Wonderful. I I uh, I started some kind of educational and uh, non-profit uh, activity and this is an idea to volunteer if if, if not for ICF for whoever you want I don't want to be seen as a promoter of a certain organization or yeah. whatever you feel like you want to volunteer do that yeah. because you will feel good about that That's right. That's right. I met Alan Seal mm. and I I managed to to bring uh, to bring him I, I knew him from ICA somehow yeah. because he was one of the teachers there right. as well back in the day <laughs> with Bill Turpin, with Mercy, with, yes, me, with everybody. Yes. So was Alan Seal. With those kind of woo-woo things, at that time, I thought that they are, <laughs> you know, the wheel of manifestation and all yeah. those things that I didn't understand because I'm an engineer, Mel. You know, I'm an mm. engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer. So for me, okay. it's one plus one. It's not. It's <laughs> a lot of rational and emotional comes after. So I... I I uh, met him again, I think, in Montreal or in Orlando. So I invited him to Romania to one of our mm. conferences. And I started to read his books and to understand slowly mm. this new uh, universal philosophy. So he, I, I, I consider him also a mentor because I, I, I am transformed as far as my presence. So I will invite everybody to go to their own identity and understand that even if you call yourself, like I call myself, I'm an engineer. Okay, I, I practiced very few years and then, you know, I, I landed into the commercial area. I was pretty good and I'm still pretty good in this. And here again, I'm, I'm now changing my mm. everything, you know, being a, a master coach and who yeah. knows where I'm going because, you know, we, we are in some deep uh, transformation times yeah. right now. Yeah. So my advice is this, you know, don't put yourself labels and don't put yourself mm. in small categories. Mm. Let yourself be grounded. I remember I invited, mm. we had more than 100 people at the conference when Alan was here. Some of the, uh, the guests were kind of skeptical. They said, okay, you know, I don't get this. I mean, this is kind of profound or I mean, it's like, spiritual and connected yeah. with the universe and you know looking uh, in the present from the future and going backwards and all that and i can tell you that it changed my life i mean mm. now this is the way i see things i mean even with this pandemic yeah. it was some kind of hard reset and slowing down yeah. but you know i can understand different uh, the world based on on this experience and uh, uh, even the experience with getting the, the master, uh, it was a painful almost two years of denying myself and kind of asking myself, why in the world I want to do that? And the moment when you, when you get it over, I know, I, I'm sure you share this, it's yeah. worth. I mean, this is how we live. We, 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 we have a life yeah. and if if we plan everything and if we think that hey things will be like we planned and we will reach an objective no no i think this is the beauty of coaching mm. the beauty of your you'll never know who you meet and what kind of experience you will have mm. Mm. and what kind of uh, epiphany or revelation or i don't know and life will uh, will give you even bad experiences yeah. you know who knows maybe in a different area not necessarily yeah. in the business area maybe personal maybe with your kids maybe you'll never know mm -hmm. uh but we we are prepared to uh to work and this is the good news because now the coaching from now it's not the same as 15 yeah. 16 years ago 
And I have a feeling that in 10 years, we will not recognize uh, <laughs> too much because I'm, I'm watching right now how, how fast things are, are, yeah. uh, are moving. Yeah. I started to work with some uh, fintechs and uh, you know, everything gets accelerated for these guys. So yes. it's like you, you need to grab your, your belt and stay tight. You know, even us as coaches, because yeah. otherwise, you know, they will blow your mind. Mm, mm. Like I'm on a roller coaster, huh? That kind of segues very nicely, Sirban, um, to this question. What is the future of coaching looking like? What do you think? Uh, I... <laughs> I, I like to do, uh, to, I'm, you know, I like predictions. I like, I'm not, uh, I, I would say that if, mm. if we will not accelerate our change as well mm. as coaches, doesn't matter if we are calling master coaches or yeah. in the eyes of our clients, especially yeah. the uh, Z generation, the, uh, the Y generation, mm -hmm. yeah. we are some old people. Yeah. They don't care too much about the age or expertise. So That's it's true. in our hands. I think, I think we, are, uh, we are still not a commodity and we will not be a commodity mm. uh, despite all the technological uh, advances and platforms that are progressing right now with uh, the yeah. algorithm and everything. Uh, we will not be obsolete. And uh, personal, I think that the, the capacity that we have to dream and to really uh, be flexible in mm -hmm. whatever the future is bringing us will pay dividends for us. Otherwise, it will be difficult. Look, look at the pandemic. I, yeah. I mean, uh, even if it was so adverse to work yeah. on Zoom and work on because everybody was there and they were getting tired, somehow uh, you need to find your way and right. to launch your new solutions and do your continue. So this, is, this will accelerate. I mean, there is no doubt. And as far as the leaders and uh, this, okay, it was a controlled period in which a lot of people rebelled against rules and regulations. Mm. I don't know, I mean, you know, it, it's it's really if if it will be very democratic, you still need to be uh, changing and be accepted and accept the future that is coming. There is no doubt it's coming. It mm. will no no longer be like we used to to project it. That that will be my my mm -hmm. reading in the mm -hmm. future. I know it's not very clear, but I see yeah. myself uh, there somehow. But yeah. maybe. Uh, Maybe in a in a wise guy position, I hope. <laughs> Somebody. Well, no one can predict the future, Sherban. So, you know, it's it's one of those things, right? It's it's your guess as good as mine, right? Um, sure. Through through that journey, what do you think would be a brave moment that you would like to share with us? I will uh, link this with my. I don't know how brave it was, but I think it was somehow courageous because I, I told you the story that I was quite satisfied with myself and uh, something happened like uh, almost, I think now is three years. Uh, mm. I, I, I got an opportunity, a huge opportunity to, to change my career and my, uh, let's say my retirement plans and everything. Uh, and that was, uh, that was an interesting experience that made me mm. decide to become a master coach. And I tell you why, because I, I said, you know, I, I, my, my main value, uh, it's speaking the truth. And yeah. I always, uh, now I was kind of stepping a little bit, not necessarily on this, but it was a huge opportunity a money opportunity in the golf mm. area. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of ready to make like, a, I don't know how to call it, to project myself in that area yeah. for, a, yeah. for an easy retirement, let's say, something okay. like this. Okay. And the moment of truth was when the job was not offered to me. And, uh, you know, I learned so many things because I mm. went there. 
And it was something about the way things are perceived and about who you are and who somebody else wants to be yeah, and yeah. who you are not actually. You mm -hmm. know, it's talking about identity. Yes. So coming back, I was really kind of disappointed. I said, okay, if, if the only way, uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put the effort on, uh, on this uh, on this journey and uh, I'll go and raise the, the bar. And that was a moment of truth for myself because I'm a pretty, uh, I wouldn't call myself, uh, I'm comfortable. It's not the same with lazy, right? So I like to, to develop my own things and not to be challenged or controlled or driven or constrained. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's the, the, the uh, athlete uh, dilemma, you know, when you push yourself to the limits because you want some kind of uh, reward. Yeah. And yes, that was the, my moment of truth in which I, I push myself mm. from a very comfortable life. Otherwise, I said, okay, well, let's, this is the moment. Mm. This is my moment. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. And, and you know, I just want to replay that back by saying that I don't know whether, and I'll be asking you, I, I don't know whether if that didn't happen, you would actually go after the MCC. So you, you were telling the story as though like this happened yes. and then this, this became the catalyst for you to go on back to your, yes. your yes. identity. Am I, am I hearing correctly? Yes. Wow. You perfectly. Perfectly. It was so annoying or so disappointing or so emotionally strong. Yeah, yeah. Then I said, well, how, how can I stay in denial that I don't need this mm. uh, because I need to wow. uh, and I want to yeah. uh, go above this level that I display. And, yeah. you know, one, one, uh, one thing that I, I always uh, consider important, even for the clients that I work with, mm. is the level of acceptance of feedback. Mm. If you are not accepting any feedback <laughs> of any kind, you know, feedback yeah. in general, yeah. maybe you can work with somebody else. And, yeah. you know, myself, I, I want to accept, I need to accept, and I accepted this feedback. Yeah. which was kind of life-changing yeah. and uh, for me, because I, I, I was almost, con I don't know how to explain this, but you, I think you felt it. It was very hard for me to, yeah. to accept this feedback. And then I said, okay, this is the lesson. Mm -hmm. This is the lesson I'm taking from this feedback. Yeah. There is nothing that can stop me right now. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it happened. And after like uh, 16 months, I was kind of questioning myself because those recordings, I mean, I was like, <laughs> yes. what can we do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a yes. good coach. What do you mean? I, you know, I don't. Yeah. Anyway, but that was nothing, nothing in comparison with, uh, yeah, with the other things. So feedback is something that yeah. we need to accept, in yeah. my opinion. Is as though like you went through that hardship to find yourself. And then in, in that finding of yourself, even though there was that MCC hardship, <laughs> that wasn't really too hard after all, because you were flowing with your river. Yeah. And that's just so beautiful. Mm. Yeah. In that uh, respect, in the river of, uh, of my life, uh, my last mentor, Carly Anderson, I mm. found her. And actually, I was reaching her like probably two, three years before this event. And I, I said, you know what? Nah, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to do this. I'm, I'm too good. I'm a mentor. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a teacher. I'm a trainer. I'm, I'm everything. So why do I need this? Nah. And then, you know, I went back to Carly and mm. 
yeah the rest is history she's amazing she yeah. is amazing yeah her, her name pops up every time i speak to another person you know um she's done so much and yeah. for our industry um back to you jerban if i asked you if there's something that you could turn back the clock and do it differently now on hindsight yeah what would you do i guess i would spend even more time that i spend mm. in um listening and uh observing the dynamics of my family it's it's something that probably at the beginning of my career i was kind of not doing and it's interesting that this was this was my discovery in uh, in that fundamentals that i was absent disconnected from let's say the family activities so much younger much more focused on uh, developing the business and everything and um in if i would do something differently i would pay more attention and observe more the dynamics in my family that thank you as as simple as that it's never too late to do this because uh yeah we have a a private business and we work together yeah and you know our daughter is uh developing and growing so we need to leave a legacy i mean why not we'll do that for the family that's so beautiful my friend and you you mentioned thank you for uh, the question you're welcome you mentioned a powerful word as well legacy yeah yeah what would be yours to leave behind i'm always uh, interested in uh, not in pleasing mm. but in let's say being recognized that somehow i influenced somebody's life i uh, reconnect with uh, one of the uh, colleagues from city of poland back in so i was there in 2006 and i went back to a european conference and she told me that during the the program i asked her a question in a certain moment wow and that changed her life and you know i didn't remember <laughs> obviously i said okay so what was the question do you know she said, yeah. of course i know yes <laughs> what was the question and she said who are you in this moment oh Okay and this is very contextual obviously mm. and i said well thank you mm. this is our work now we mm. we want to be aware and perhaps to have this capacity to record or to know when we have an impact or we change one life yeah i don't think this is possible so whatever legacy if it's present through some people that worked yeah. with me and yeah. you know they they are thankful i'm happy you know here and now that's it like someone once said one coaching conversation at a time yeah yeah mm. uh, this is uh from a business standpoint this is very limiting <laughs> now from a humanistic Of course uh, because you know life it's it's more than a business model yes yeah? life is life it's Absolutely. infinite so we don't limit ourselves mm. but yeah we take one conversation at a time yeah. and uh, this is how we win in our in our heart mm. and this is part of that legacy because your your recording is done here on the 100 master coaches so this will continue being watched and listened to by others well very nice thank you
You're welcome. Um, what is that master wisdom that you'd like to leave with the budding coaches coming into our industry even right now? I want to be fair with everybody who is entering. Mm. Like, like I felt fairness when I entered. Mm. I think the field is a little bit different. The rules are changing. Yeah. And my invitation, let's say, or the way I see it right now is use your own platform. And because when I entered, I, I'm respectful to what I was trained or taught. Yeah. But, you know, I remember those days when they said, you know, forget about everything you learned, nothing you can use here, we will teach you. I have a different perspective right now, and this is my message. You know, whatever your platform is, you're a manager, you're a leader, you're a team leader, you are working, you are an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just take your reality and make from this reality your journey on. Use mm. this platform. You know, don't burn your bridges. Mm. Like even at the mindset level, you may think, okay, so if I'm a consultant, it means that I, I need to separate things. Mm. You know, I, today I'm a consultant, tomorrow I'm a coach. Many years I thought in this way, you know, like mm. making brackets or no no i mean as you say it's a coaching conversation yeah. so if you pay attention to the dynamics and you learn based on your own platform i think you will be a good coach in today's mm. environment mm. not for yesterday mm. you don't need to be a coach for yesterday you yeah. you need to be a coach for tomorrow so that mm. will be my my take <laughs> it's based on research and observation because yeah. yeah it was different 15 16 years ago i'm sure it was different 20 some years ago yeah. so now it's different again absolutely and it's so consistent what you're saying because even 10 years from now as you were saying before um we may not even recognize this thing we call coaching and yet it's going to be a powerhouse impacting lives in that different new way. And it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is often my last question, Shirban. Um, as coaches, you know, we ask powerful questions. So yeah. what will be your powerful question that you want to leave with our audience watching today? Well, I think I quote it already. So it seems like <laughs> this is the identity. Now, uh, I, I need to make a, a, let's, an observation. Yeah. Because even if you look now in the dictionary, mm. th this was some kind of belonging uh, to the past that, mm. you know, you know some powerful questions and you, you will be okay. Everything comes from listening and from the context and from whatever is there. Yeah. So a simple question will not stand. But if you plot this on the dynamics of the session, could be at the beginning, the middle, or at the end, that can be different. But yeah. I would say that in any kind of portion, if you know when to ask, who are you now when you are saying this? Or who are you now when you are <laughs> abiding to this objective? Or who are you now when yeah. you're learning this? Yeah. That will go directly to the identity. At least those yeah. are my powerful questions that are really resonating with my clients. So this is what I would share. And I would ask that question back to you, Shirban. Today, after this conversation, who are you now? I'm a very happy person in this moment because I shared stories with you that you know I, I was not coming with any agenda <laughs> and at least about those things yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm really happy now I'm yeah. a happy happy camper uh, happy that <laughs> I, I reconnected with you and yeah. I got 
those deep questions that, you know, I feel so much energy right now. I know that maybe some will watch and say, okay, maybe he is just <laughs> telling stories. No, I mean, I know how I feel. Yeah. I feel yeah. changed after this uh, discussion with you. And I'm really glad that you will record it and I will be able to watch it again. <laughs> Now, it may sound a little bit narcissistic. <laughs> yeah. I kind of have this habit to watch my interviews and, and you know, it's surprising that sometimes you discover new things all the I time. See so I see from your questions, from what uh -huh. I say, from how I move or behave and all that. So. Thank you very much. It was, I'm very happy. I feel changed and extremely, extremely uh, energetic. You, you gave me a lot of energy with this interview, for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I feel the same, actually. And yes, for I'm the glad. skeptics, I do feel the energy as well. So there you go. Um, Sherban, tell us and the audience, of course, um, how can they get to connect with you? If they, if they want to connect with me, uh, they can find me. Uh, I told you already my, uh, uh, my company name, but it's yeah. even easier because the mm. URL, it's easier. It's I consultants. I from I am. I consultants yeah. in one word, dot yeah. ro. Ro is from yeah. Romania. Romania. So I consultants dot ro is my website. I have many things there. Hopefully, yeah. we'll have this uh, recording as, as well there. Um, but also, I have case studies and my... Uh, and if anybody wants to uh, send me questions about my research and all that, they can reach me uh, via LinkedIn profile. Mm. Mm. I, I prefer website because uh, on the website, there is a contact. I have a phone number. Yeah. email address you can yeah. reach me yes i'm a little bit more uh, let's say conservative uh meaning that i still believe that we can make a phone call or reach somebody and discuss okay. and it's not so marketing uh driven yeah. yeah yeah beautiful so go and call sherban okay <laughs> And with that, I say thank you, thank you again, Sherman. Really, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much, uh, Mel, for your wonderful questions and good luck with your show. Yeah, It's you. amazing. Thank you. This has been the 100 Master Coaches show. Of course, today with my good friend, Sherman, and myself, Mel, signing out. Till the next time, catch you. Bye-bye for now. You have been watching the 100 Master Coaches series with your host, Coach Mel, MCC. Brought to you by Catalyst Coach. www.catalystcoach.live We will be right back with our next Master Coach on the 100 Master Coaches series.